Now, I'm lucky to have seen the entire play, all right? And you all have to see it on Broadway. It is a miracle. It is the most original, informative. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I think that everything we create has a story. The play has a story, right? Like a person? Yeah, right? absolutely. So what made you think this incredibly original idea could be a play? I... I don't know where the idea came from. I knew for about 20 years that I wanted to make a play about this experience I had as a teenager because it was so formative for me. Um, I really did. I was a very, uh, I, I did love the Constitution as a young girl and I wanted to revisit that time. And when I started to make the play, um, I began, as I said, to become quite disillusioned with the document and I also started to trace the history of four generations of women in my family and, and began to understand the way the document had not protected them. Uh, and I, I just, from that, I, I sort of understood the form it needed to take. I, I understood that it needed to, that I needed to actually appear as myself, that I needed to uh, testify openly and honestly and not sort of couch the play in any kind of fiction, um, that I wanted it to be sort of as real and human and anti-theatrical as possible. Um, so that's kind of the, the genesis mm -hmm. of it. I, also, I had spent, I, I'd seen the, the silence that my, um, that my female ancestors had sort of been forced to endure and I felt like I, I'm lucky and privileged enough to live in a time when I don't have to be silent, so I decided I should speak. <laughs> okay, and here's, here's the other miracle, all right. How did you two come together? Okay, I was in the debate room, you know, just practicing debate. I think I was in... Explain the debate room. Oh. It's a learning lounge. It had, at that time, it had a lot of books, just shelves and shelves and shelves of mm -hmm. books. And then it's a whiteboard he, right, right there. And then there's like more empty shelves. We were repairing it at the time. And there was two tables with three chairs. And then there's Mr. Beatty's desk, like behind the two chairs. And he's there. And he's just, and then there's a table. Okay, where but the, where was it? <laughs> I mean, the debate. The debate. <laughs> it was in my school. We, we, don't, we don't all have a debate room. <laughs> It was in my middle school. in your school. Yeah, okay. in my middle right. school. Okay. His chair was just there. <laughs> he was the judge, so he was constantly judging us. So you would just stand in front of the podium. It would actually like be a podium, and you would debate, and he would tell you to stop and start what you did bad, what you need to start over again. And we just keep working and working and working and working. Mm -hmm. And then he was just like, oh, um, I think they're, they're having auditions for this play. You should really try out. Um, they're asking for a young debater, and I was just like, oh, okay. And then I, <laughs> and then I really got the more information I, when I was in my grandma's house. My mom called my grandma, and then they were just like, oh, this audition, and they think they got you, or something. It's very, it's like, it was a long time ago. It's very <laughs> scattered out. I don't really remember. Well, you were only 12, so. <laughs> And, and what did you think when you first I met her? I couldn't believe when it. When you met each well, other, what did you I, uh, So I was out of town at the first audition, and I got a call from the director saying, um, we just met this incredible young debater. You, we have to cast her. And I wanted to cast someone 15 because I wanted to cast someone who was my age when I did the contest. Um, but she was 12, and he said, I just, I think we have to cast her. So I came back, and she came back in. We talked for a long time, and she did... Uh, her own speech, sort of extemporaneous speech, and I, I really thought she was one of the most brilliant young people I'd ever met, and I agreed that we should cast her even though she's only 12. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now here's, here's my part of this, okay. All right. <laughs> I am utterly hooked on the fact that our Constitution came from the Iroquois Confederacy, right? Yes. And in fact, that meant that everybody was equal, everybody was included. There were circles of consensus building for the seven huge nations and so on. So a lot of the problems of our Constitution that you point out did not exist in its origin, right? So does that make you feel mad as hell? Yeah. 
<laughs> well, you, when you came to the show, you told me the story, which I didn't know, which is that when mm. Benjamin Franklin met with some of the leaders of the Iroquois Confederacy. You know, no, he invited. Or invited them, right. Yeah, to the, to the Constitutional Convention. Oh, right. Yeah, he invited Iroquois men. Yes. Uh, he didn't have the sense to invite women. But when, <laughs> when the Iroquois men arrived, the first thing they said was, where are the women? Yeah, that makes me furious as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, I, I didn't know that story until you came to the play. And I think we're going to put, I'm going to put it into the, we're we going to put into the debate on Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Because yeah. this, I think this speaks to the crazy way we learn history. Yes, you know? absolutely. I mean, if we learned history when people began, as opposed to when Columbus arrived, <laughs> thinking he was in India, I mean. <laughs> People are only called Indians because he was such a lousy navigator. He thought he was an Indian, right? <laughs> that, that we would have a very different view. Is there some way we can build that in? I don't I, know. I mean, that just... certainly was the process of the play for me, is going back and, and realizing that all the history I'd been taught was a lie, uh, that so much had been left out of it, that it was so whitewashed. That was my sort of, that's sort of the journey of the play, is realizing um, how much I had been taught that was wrong. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we're all doing it today, right? Mm -hmm. We're and, yeah. and people have been doing it. Incredible people like yourself right. have been doing it for generations. But I guess we just keep trying to tell the stories that get cut out. Well, right? yeah. I mean, there are two things: history and the past, and they are not the same. Right. All right. So, <laughs> so we're all trying to to complete it, and I think it would be so much more inspirational. Now, here's my other question. Okay. The whole world is divided into two kinds of people, those who divide everything into two and those who don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the whole idea of a division into two comes from gender. So societies that don't have gender, and the Native American cultures did not have he and she, they didn't have gendered pronouns. There was much more recognition of diversity, right? So is there any way we can build three or four or more, at least three, let's say three, into a debate structure? Oh, I mean, we certainly have the people to do it. <laughs> I think that's a fantastic idea. What do you think? It seems very interesting. We want to get into that. <laughs> I didn't even know about the Iroquois. Yeah. <laughs> so now. Yeah. Yeah, because, it, I mean, it, the native cultures didn't divide into two, right. so that you would, and and uh, witches, for instance, who were just, you know, working on women's health. That's why they were called <laughs> witches. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> really, I'm not making this up. Okay, but, um, <laughs> a coven was 13 people because they didn't want to be able to be divisible into two. They, right. Oh it's yeah. Smart. Yeah. Right? That's really smart. Maybe that's why we're three people on stage. Oh. <laughs> yes, now we've solved everything with three people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I do love the idea of, of fracturing the debate into, or, or yeah, it's true that we're certainly still buying into the binary in the way we're approaching the problem. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to think about trans. But I'm, I'm really grateful that we decided to keep the Constitution in spite of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Because actually, the move for a constitutional convention comes from the ultra right wing, and they control enough state yes. legislatures so they can almost do it. And uh, there's not too many things that scare me as much as the idea I of, agree with of you rewriting completely. the Constitution. Right. So thank you for your wisdom. And <laughs> thank you. All right. And from now on, we're going to start when people started, OK? Not when all the bad stuff started, right? OK. And we are going to uh, challenge uh, you know, the whole idea of history. We're going to have three, not just two. But we're never going to forget the miracle that we just saw on this stage and that we're going to see on Broadway. Yeah. You all have to go. <laughs> Thank you.